What is going on guys? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another video. So it appears we have a Christmas miracle on our hands. The 7.02 jailbreak has finally been released. We always knew that this was coming because the 6.72 jailbreak or the kernel exploit for 6.72 works all the way up to 7.02 and has done since it released. The only reason why we were limited to 6.72 was because we needed the WebKit exploit to actually implement the kernel exploit. So without a WebKit exploit for 7.02, then we weren't able to, you know, jailbreak 7.02. So the latest uh, WebKit exploit before was 6.72, which is why that was the latest jailbreak that we had access to. However, now there is a new WebKit exploit that's been released that works on 7.02. So now we have a full jailbreak for 7.02. So in this video, I just want to give you guys my first impressions and my recommendations here at this early stage of the exploit. So first of all, obviously, I wouldn't recommend anybody updates the 7.02 yet. Give it some time. The uh, early impressions of this exploit were that it had only a 10% success rate. So that means very, very unstable. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tried the jailbreak yet myself. Um, so obviously, if you're on 6.72, stay on 6.72 right now. If you're on 5.05, .05, stay on 5.05. .05. You'll still benefit from the 7.02 jailbreak in the sense that uh, any new games that you can now run, like Resident Evil 3 Remake, for example, they'll be backported to work on 6.72 and 5.05. .05, so you don't really need to update if you're already on a previous jailbreak. This is mainly for people who, unfortunately, in the situation where they were on 7.00, 7.01 or 7.02 when the 6.72 jailbreak came out and they've been waiting for the 7.02 jailbreak for almost six months now. Um, but luckily it is finally here. So people on those firmware versions will now be able to jailbreak their PS4, even if it only has a 10% success rate right now. And if it hasn't already been improved, it will be improved eventually. I'm sure the stability will improve. Just like with 6.72 when it first launched, the stability was all over the place. It's still not a very stable jailbreak in general right now, but generally, if you compare it to when it first came out, the 6.72 jailbreak was very, very unstable to begin with. Like, I remember it took about one in every 10 attempts, or, or maybe not quite, maybe one in every eight attempts on my PS4 to actually get the exploit to work without crashing. Now it will, now it will actually, like, crash one in every seven attempts or so. So it basically it works, you know, seven out of 10 times. So it's it's definitely been improved a lot since the beginning. So hopefully the same thing will happen here with 7.02. It may already be more stable than when it first launched already. Who knows? Yeah, obviously a lot of the exploit sites haven't been updated yet. Lethal's host, uh, Alizov's host, they haven't been updated to add the 7.02 versions of all the payloads yet. So again, just wait for that to happen. Once that happens, I'll update one of my PS4s and give the exploit a try. And then I'll have a better idea of, you know, whether or not it's worth updating to it or if it's very unstable and not worth it yet. So right now, just hold back and wait for um, for some more information on that. And generally, the advantages of this jailbreak right here, in terms of newer games that you can run and um, being able to jailbreak uh, more PS4s, because obviously a higher firmware means more PS4s are now jailbreakable. So generally looking at this, if we take a look at the 6.72 exploit, so you can see that the release date of this firmware was July 2019. And that means that the next update that came out after 6.72, 7.00, which was October 2019, that basically meant that if you wanted to get a jailbroken PS4, you needed to get a PS4 that was manufactured around about this, this date, you know, October 2019 or before then, and then it would be on 6.72 or lower so that you could do the jailbreak. And for games as well, it meant that, you know, when it comes to what games you can actually run on 6.72, then you just had to make sure that the game was released, you know, in October 2019 or before then, and then it will be runnable on 6.72. So comparing that to what we have now with 7.02, 7.02 came out in December 2019, and the next update that came out after that, of course, is 7.50, which was released in April 2020. So that means that any game that came out in April 2020 or before then will be runnable in 7.02. And if you want to get a jailbroken PS4, you just need to get a PS4 that was manufactured around this date or before then, and it will be, 
you know, on 7.02 or lower, and it will therefore be jailbreakable. Just get a console that's bundled with a game that came out around about this date or before then, and then it will be guaranteed to be on 7.02 or lower so that you can do the jailbreak. And again, for people who are unfamiliar with PS4 jailbreaks, if you've updated past 7.02, there's no way of downgrading basically. So if you're on a higher firmware than 7.02, there's no way of going back down to 7.02. So that's why when you're buying a console, you need to make sure the console already comes on that lower firmware version. So yeah, that's basically it. So obviously on 6.72, 5.05, you'll get the back ports um, so that any new games like Resident Evil 3 will be runnable on 6.72 and 5.05 anyway. There's really no rush to do this update. You should only do this update if you're on firmware version 7, 7.01 or 7.02, then do the jailbreak because you don't have any other options. But uh, for people on 6.72 and 5.05, just stay where you are right now. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So if this jailbreak turns out to be just as stable as 6.72 in the future, then I will probably do a video. Um, I'll be doing a video on updating from 6.72 to 7.02. I'll be doing a video basically, I'll probably have to redo the whole jailbreak tutorial series that I did for 6.72, kind of having a bit of a crisis moment about that at the moment, because I'm like, holy crap, all those videos basically have to redo them all for 7.02 once that jailbreak comes out. But hey, it's more content, so uh, nothing wrong with that, I guess. Uh, it's fine, everything's fine. Um, so, so within the next week or so, if you see a video from me that's uh, a video on you know, jailbreaking 7.02, a full 7.02 jailbreak tutorial, then you know that it's just as stable pretty much as 6.72 and that you're safe to update from 6.72 to 7.02. If you don't see a tutorial like that from me, then that basically means that the jailbreak is too unstable and not really worth uh, updating to yet. And if there's any other kind of major developments, I will make another video to inform you guys about it. But yeah, that's basically it. We have a 7.02 jailbreak. It's a nice Christmas gift. Of course, the web kit was released by this guy right here, which is pretty awesome. Kudos to him. One of the interesting things, though, to me is now that we have this new web kit and SCE.party hasn't really been updated with any additional information about this yet. But what's, what's interesting to me is Okay, so this web kit now works on 7.02, but how far does this web kit work? Because even though the kernel exploit only works up to 7.02, if the web kit exploit works higher up to 7.50 or 8.00, then yeah, that's a that's a really good position for um, PS4 jailbreaking to be in because that just means we need a new kernel exploit because if we already have the web kit exploit, we just need a new kernel exploit in order to get a jailbreak on even higher firmwares like 7.50 and 8.00. Uh, so that could happen, especially we've seen that um, the Flow, the person who released the 6.72 kernel exploit, he he released it by basically reporting it to Sony on Hacker One. He got a $10,000 bounty for it. He requested the information be disclosed. That's how everybody found out about it and how we now have the 6.72 and now the 7.02 jailbreak. Um, is thanks to him. But not too long ago, he also reported another bug to Sony that hasn't been disclosed yet, and he also got another $10,000 bounty for that one as well. So the question is, is that another kernel exploit since he got paid the same amount as he got last time for the last kernel exploit that he reported to Sony? But this time, he might not request that it gets disclosed because he's kind of not too happy with the PS4 jailbreaking scene a lot of the people in it for kind of harassing him the first time. You know, just people being desperate to get the exploit and kind of having a go at him for saying that he was going to release an exploit months earlier and nothing happened for a long time. But yeah, you know, it's unfortunate that, that people do that. So if this is another kernel exploit, again, this is all speculation. If this is another kernel exploit that the flow has discovered, then there's a chance that um, he might just not request that Sony disclose it which would be which wouldn't be great but you know obviously it's it's his right to do that i suppose hopefully he will maybe change his mind if that is the case because it would be awesome to get a 7.50 jailbreak or an 8.00 jailbreak possibly if we're talking about an 8.00 jailbreak we could even be talking about a potential ps5 jailbreak on the base firmware for the ps5 so anyway again this is all speculation just kind of where my head's at right now it's, it's looking promising. If this web kit works higher than 7.02, 
and the flow reported an actual a new kernel exploit on a higher firmware to sony if that gets disclosed then we could see another jailbreak so the chances of having an, another jailbreak even after 7.02 are looking fairly promising i would say at this stage um, but again it's speculation it could be a very long time before we see another jailbreak on an even higher firmware or it might not be that long it might just be another few months so yeah anyway that's basically it guys so let me let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, this is very interesting development it's nice that we have a new jailbreak i'm not as excited as i was obviously with the 6.72 jailbreak because that was such a long time that we didn't have a new jailbreak from 5.05 .05 to 6.72 whereas going from 6.72 to 7.02 is only a couple of firmware versions higher so it's not as big of a deal but it is still obviously you know awesome it's great that we now have another jailbreak for an even higher firmware so yeah anyway i'm excited hopefully you guys are excited about it and uh we'll we'll follow this as it develops so thank you guys for watching and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one